With the recent Chapter 5 The Pacific update, Battlefield 5 is in a far better state than it ever has been. With the game releasing around 12 months ago, how much has changed? Is the game better than it was? Well, I think that's a given. It's certainly in a far better and more advanced state than we saw in the alphas and the betas. But in terms of the core gameplay and the content, have things taken a step in the right direction? Battlefield suffered from several problems, not only from a marketing standpoint, but also in terms of the game being playable and whether people had the desired content in the game on release. DICE took a very unusual approach with Battlefield 5, deciding to make some quite controversial statements and also littering the game with some weird propaganda and also focusing on some unseen battles. It wasn't what people wanted, but DICE have certainly turned the tides with the most recent update, going for the more popular battles and a full Battlefield experience. In this video, I'm going to take a look back at the alpha and the beta and then the release content for Battlefield 5 and compare it to what we have today. Have we seen a big improvement across the board? Can we be looking at a success in terms of a Battlefield game? And where do I think it will go in the future with upcoming content and new updates? Here is what I had to say about Battlefield 5 around 10 to 12 months ago. I did make quite a few videos focusing on the negative state of the game and the approach DICE were taking. This one in particular was quite fun to make, 200 things wrong with Battlefield. Let's just listen to the intro to that video that, as I said, was made in around December last year. Battlefield 5 is a game that completely divides opinion. Some think it's great, whilst others think it's an overhyped, unfinished mess. One thing we can all agree on, though, is that it is missing features, and the list of bugs, glitches, and problems goes far beyond an acceptable amount for a AAA title created by a studio with the pedigree of DICE. So not a good look. Battlefield 5 was really in quite a poor state. A list of bugs that went way over 200 in number, and I'd probably say that I was being quite conservative with 200 things wrong with Battlefield 5 when I made that video. Since then, DICE have released quite a few patches, and we have seen improvements. With the alpha and the beta, there were several things that I noted at the time that were severely wrong with Battlefield 5. Take a look at the things that I list now, and in your head, try and work out if they have improved. Starting out, you had the vehicles. The planes were a completely broken mess, vehicles in general were not great, the balance was all over the place and the bugs were absolutely endless. Since then, DICE have improved the vehicles, especially with the new update seeing some brand new vehicles and a larger specialisation tree enter the game. There is still work to do though as I feel the vehicles in Battlefield 5 aren't great, the whole gameplay surrounding vehicles is a bit poor and that's linked in to animations attrition and the overall feel of some of the air vehicles, especially in the game. The huge marketing controversy that marred the Battlefield franchise for around six months, in my opinion, was not a good look. They have since made some really big changes, and in my opinion, the game is in a far better state, but not only the game, the franchise. People look forward to updates in the game, content is far better received on YouTube and Twitter, and I think overall there's just a better vibe around the game in general. The old saying, if you don't like it, don't buy it, seems to have been swept under the carpet, and the uneducated comments that were made about the community, once again, don't really return to places like Reddit or Twitter very often at all. There are a few bugs like anti-aliasing and the ability to not turn TAA off, which have continued through the game's life. I don't think that's something that DICE are going to address. It is annoying, it makes the game a little blurry, and overall it can be difficult to spot enemies. Talking about visibility, that is something that was an issue in the game, and DICE have addressed that over time, and it is far better in its current state. Attrition has seen widespread changes from the alpha to what we have today. DICE have kind of dialed it back a bit, it was way more hardcore when the game came out and it was very difficult to keep your ammo count up, since then we've had the ammo packs on fallen soldiers appear, attrition is not as hardcore as it used to be, you can also take ammo and health off friendly players and carry more on your soldier from when you spawn but also after you grab ammo from a resupply station. Overall, I think it's in a better place. Attrition was a nice idea, but really, I think all we needed was a dedicated hardcore mode for those players that fancied a challenge in that sense. The game was delayed until November, you do have to remember, so some of these things 
were being prepared to be fixed when the game was in the alpha and beta stage because DICE knew that the game needed more work. I'd say that the November release was a positive move. We've also seen the upcoming Battlefield game dropped back or at least planned to be released between 2021 and 2022, giving them way more time to work on BF5 and the new game. This means that Battlefield is only going to improve into the future. Performance was quite poor in the alpha and the beta, and since then it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Some maps are good, some maps are bad. DX11 and DX12 offer completely different experiences on PC, and many people on console also complain of performance issues on some maps. Stuttering related to attrition is a major issue. I still struggle with that today. It's been going on for months and months on end. And overall, I'd say FPS is fairly low on the new maps in the update. Still playable, but I have a pretty good PC, and if I get low FPS, then I'm pretty certain other people will be struggling too. They did fix the FPS issues on Operation Underground, but that's one map, and there are many that still need work. Audio is something that I can really congratulate DICE on. It was awful when the game first released, really terrible. Since then, it has become far better, namely with the most recent patch. That is a really solid bit of work from DICE to get the footsteps especially up to a good standard. You can now hear where people are coming from, and it just makes the gameplay experience flow better. It's far less frustrating than it used to be, and overall, it's what you need in an FPS game. The one-hit kill bug at the start of the game. This is probably related to netcode, I'm not really too sure on the technical side of it, but it was really bad around the Overture update in December last year. This has then improved quite a bit. The netcode in general, if that's what we're putting this down to, does feel better, but there's still work to be done. I do die around corners from time to time, sometimes my bullets don't do any damage to enemies, and the UI bug where you do more damage to an enemy is still there, sometimes it's just not as common. I do from time to time dust on planes as well with Panzerfausts and the tanks. That is a little odd to still see in the game, but I suppose the amount of people on a server, 64 in total, with varying pings, there are bound to be some issues around. What about the content that DICE have added to the game? Well, it started out quite well. We had a few things dropped into the game like the Test Range, Panzerstorm, Mercury, Marita, a few things that were dropped in that I really questioned like the 5v5 maps and... There were some weapons and things like that that I really didn't feel that we needed in the game when what it was really crying out for were the limited time modes to actually stay instead of being ripped out after a few weeks. Overall though, thinking back, we have had quite a lot of stuff, especially considering the Pacific update being a massive content drop with lots more coming on a weekly basis from now until whenever the chapter ends. It's quite impressive. I'm really looking forward to seeing what else DICE can bring. We know we're getting Wake Island. Another map has been data mined. Lots of different weapons as well are coming along. And we are seeing interesting cosmetics being dropped in the armory on a weekly basis. I'd say that the content drops for Battlefield 5 are where I thought they would be. Maybe there was a gap over the summer that was six or eight weeks where we didn't receive anything and the communication was quite poor. That is something that DICE really have learned from and clearly we're on a better trajectory now for the direction of content in the game. The little things have improved in Battlefield, that's for sure. I'm talking about things like customising your weapons and not having to back out of the game in order to do it. That's really great and something you couldn't do when the game first released. Sure, assignments definitely need work and there are some things that don't track properly in-game. Again, that is something DICE will look at, but overall the Quality of life in Battlefield is much better. The UI was widely criticised and DICE have been working on that clearly in the last update. There are some major changes in there. This, if it continues, will put Battlefield in a way better place come the next chapter. So let me know what you think of Battlefield 5 in its current state compared to when it was released in the comments. I think it's gone from being a 5 out of 10 game to a 7 to a 7.5 out of 10 game. I'm really enjoying certain things in it. There are other things which I think still need work. Another really good patch is what the game needs, I think, just to keep that momentum going. And then if the next chapter, I'm not sure what it will be, when it's coming, but if they drop some really good battlefield maps in a theater of war that we can all relate to, that is what I want to see. And it's almost like we're year two battlefield. I can't wait to see what's coming with the game. It's almost like a new game has been released and everyone's back in a positive mood around this new content. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.